Along the west coast of North America at 9 p.m. on the January 26, 1700, one of the biggest earthquakes in recorded history happened. In a big earthquake, the underwater Cascadia thrust fault broke along a 1,000-dot-kilometer length from the middle of Vancouver Island to Northern California. This caused a lot of shaking and a huge tsunami that went across the Pacific. One of Earth's tectonic plates, the smaller Juan de Fuca plate, is sliding under the much bigger North American plate. This is where the Cascadia Fault is. So what is a megathrust earthquake? It's a very strong earthquake that usually occurs at around or above a magnitude 9. These quakes happen where two plates are being pushed under each other, which is called subduction. When this happens, the plate on top moves quickly upward, which is what usually causes the wave. What's amazing about these events is that the motion fills such huge areas. An area that was 1,000 km long and 180 km wide moved up by 30 meters during the 2004 Indian Ocean event. A 200 km long and 500 km wide area moved up by 20 meters during the 2011 Tohoku event. Come back to Cascadia. From Northern California to British Columbia, the edge is about 200 kilometers from the plate border. The intricacies are the details of earthquakes from centuries past, the way we do about this one in particular. Paleoseismology, the study of old earthquake evidence found in rocks, has grown into a small business here. It is thought that a big earthquake happens about once every 500 years. Since the event in 1700 happened 300 years ago, it's almost time for another big one. There is a 12% chance that such a big earthquake will happen in the next 50 years, which is about one in eight. Based on reports of sinkholes and tsunamis, the 1700 Cascadia earthquake was probably between 8.7 and 9.2 on the Richter scale. Japanese historical records show that this event caused a huge wave that went across the Pacific Ocean and hit land masses as far away as Australia, Indonesia, and Japan. People in Japan called it an orphan wave because the earthquake wasn't felt there. Tree rings and carbon-14 studies can be used to figure out how old the dead trees are in so-called ghost forests in Oregon and Washington. These are another important piece of proof for the tsunami. The trees in these coastal woods are thought to have died right away from the salt water when they were flooded by the megathrust earthquakes up to 36 feet of land, subsidence, and then by the tsunami. At low tide, there are a lot of tree stumps that stick out of the sand. These trees died in a tsunami in 1700 when the land fell and the water covered them fully. The trees were then buried by sand. Storms washed away the sand from the trees, revealing them. Still there, they show that there was a huge flood more than 300 years ago. The shaking from the earthquake destroyed many homes on Vancouver Island, belonging to the Cowichan people, and caused a lot of floods. People couldn't stand because the shaking was so strong and went on for so long that it made them sick. A tsunami hit the west coast of Vancouver Island, and wiped out the winter town of the Pachena Bay people. No one survived. The First Nations people on Vancouver Island have stories about these events that they tell each other. The storm went all the way across the Pacific and did a lot of damage along Japan's Pacific coast. Japan kept good records of time and gave accurate accounts of the tsunami, so we can be sure that we know the exact size and time of this big earthquake. There are also clear signs of the earthquake in the geological record. The outer coastal areas sank, flooding coastal marshes and woods that were then covered with newer sediments. There are clear signs in the rock record that the event on January 26, 1700 was not a one-time thing. It has happened many times, with gaps of hundreds of years between each one. Geological proof shows that there have been 13 big earthquakes in the last 6,000 years. We now know that something similar will happen off the coast of British Columbia at some point in the future, and that it will be very dangerous for people who live in southwest British Columbia. 
but since the fault is out to sea, it is not the biggest earthquake risk for towns on the west coast. When there aren't any big earthquake for a while, the tectonic plates get stuck together but keep moving toward each other. The Earth's crust is put under a lot of stress and compression along the coast, which keeps the earthquakes going. This is the state of things right now. Earthquakes that happen on land can be pretty big. In the last 130 years, there have been four earthquakes in southwest BC and northern Washington state, with magnitude 7 or higher. Landfalling earthquakes are the most dangerous type of earthquake because they can happen more often and be closer to cities. In 1995, an inland magnitude 6.9 earthquake happened in the same geographic setting below Kobe, Japan. It did more than 200 billion in damage. The Cascadia mega earthquake and wave could happen at any time, but where are we now? If the deep Juan de Fuca earthquake, the subduction zone earthquake, and the crustal earthquake all happen at the same time, a 9.0 magnitude earthquake can possibly shake the plate border, causing a thousand kilometer long crack and a lot of movement up and down. A tsunami that moves at 800 kilometer h can be caused by this. People living near the coast will feel the quake waves first. They will be between 7 and 8 on the magnitude scale. This strong shaking will bring down old buildings that were not built well, bridges, and other structures. It will also cause floods and soil liquefaction, which will trap people and make it harder to help them. But everyone on the coast will know that things are about to get worse and that they need to leave as soon as the ground stops moving. Land along the coast could sink by up to six feet or two meters because of the deformation that happens along the plate boundary. This makes the coastal area much more likely to flood. In about 15 to 20 minutes, the first tsunami wave will hit the coast from Victoria Island in Canada to Northern California. This won't give people much time to get to higher ground. When the waves hit the coast, they might be 30 to 40 feet, 9 to 12 meters high. But some models say they could reach 100 feet or 30 meters. They would flood up to 10 miles or 16 kilometer inland in many places along the coast. Some parts of the coast are much more likely to be flooded by a tsunami than others. People who live in these areas will need to get to higher ground very quickly after the earthquake waves stop. Due to their very long lengths, the waves will keep coming and the water will not rise for hours. The Cascadia subduction zone could cause an earthquake with a magnitude of 9.0 or higher in Oregon. This could cause a tsunami up to 100 feet high that will hit the coast. Along the coast, you can expect to feel the shaking or rolling for about five to seven minutes. The shaking or rolling will get weaker and less intense as you move farther inland. Since 1700, there hasn't been an earthquake in the Cascadia subduction zone. Pressure is building up where the Juan de Fuca plate is sinking beneath the North American plate. Scientists think that there is a 37% chance that in the next 50 years, this fault zone will be the site of a megathrust earthquake of magnitude 7.1 or higher. People all over the Pacific Northwest will be affected by this event. Oregon and the other states will likely be without services and help for at least two weeks, if not longer, when the Cascadia subduction zone earthquake happens because of how ready they are right now. People, companies, schools, the government and communities can all take steps to get ready, even though this will be hard to get past. Be two weeks ready for disasters by planning ahead and getting yourself and your community ready right now. The Be Two Weeks Ready program says that everyone should have an escape plan and enough food, water and other supplies to stay alive on their own for at least two weeks after a major disaster. Disasters can happen anywhere and at any time. Once they do, it could take days or even weeks for helpers to get to everyone who needs it. This will be very important if there is an earthquake and tsunami in Cascadia. The Be Two Weeks Ready program has been changed and will be available to everyone in June 2024. You can download all the new papers from the Oregon government website. The website is available in English, Spanish, Chinese, Russian, Vietnamese, and American Sign Language, ASL. 
Spreading this message will be of great help to those at the disaster zone. So that is it for today's video. Make sure you watch the video on your screen.